How did Israel manage to transform an arid desert into fertile, productive land? In this video, we reveal the secrets of the revolutionary water project that sustains millions of lives. Imagine a country where 60% of its territory is desert, but through determination and innovation, it has become a prosperous, productive region. In Israel, this dream became a reality through one of the most daring engineering projects of the 20th century. In a land where rainfall is a rare privilege, occurring only three to four months a year and mostly in the north, providing water for the entire nation was not just a challenge, it was a matter of survival. The solution was as visionary as it was urgent, to build a system capable of transporting water over hundreds of kilometers, crossing mountains, spanning valleys, and conquering the desert. This led to the creation of the National Water Carrier, the largest infrastructure project ever undertaken in Israel. A monumental endeavor that not only transformed the landscape of the country but also redefined the boundaries of hydraulic engineering. Thanks to this revolutionary achievement, there is now no corner of Israel without access to water, even in the most isolated regions of the Negev Desert. In this video, we will explore how Israel forever changed its nation's fate, turning an arid territory into a land of opportunity and productivity. The National Water Carrier, Israel's largest water project, is a vital artery stretching from the Sea of Galilee in the north to Mitzbi Ramon in the far south. This vast network of aqueducts, tunnels, and reservoirs represents an impressive feat. The challenge begins right at the starting point, the Sea of Galilee, situated 209 meters below sea level. The water must be pumped up to 44 meters above sea level, and from there, it travels over 130 kilometers of infrastructure. The scale of this project is reflected in staggering numbers, with pipelines up to 3.6 meters in diameter, true underground highways of water pass through mountains for kilometers, supplying enormous reservoirs that store millions of cubic meters of water, ensuring a continuous supply, even in times of scarcity. To maximize efficiency, the system operates with three main lines, each serving a specific purpose. The first line transports high-quality drinking water sourced directly from the Sea of Galilee. The second line manages slightly brackish waters, while the third line, an innovation introduced later, is dedicated exclusively to recycled water, used for agriculture and capable of providing 140 million cubic meters of water annually for irrigation in the Negev Desert. But how did this visionary idea come to life? The history of the National Water Carrier is a tale of determination and ingenuity, born out of the need to ensure the survival of a young nation in one of the world's driest regions. In the 1950s, Israel faced a unique situation, explosive population growth and the aspiration to make the Negev Desert habitable. The path to a solution was marked by trials and adjustments. The initial idea, developed by American engineer James Reyes, proposed drawing water from the Jordan River by harnessing the natural downward slope of the terrain. However, the region's complex geopolitical issues forced a reimagining of the project. It was the American specialist John Cotton who offered the definitive solution by adapting the project to the reality of Israel. His proposal, although technically more challenging and financially more costly, proved politically viable by choosing the Sea of Galilee as the main water source. This choice not only avoided international tensions but also laid the groundwork for one of the most efficient water systems in the world. Israel's national water carrier has evolved significantly since its inception, shifting from a project that initially allocated 80% of its water to agricultural irrigation to a system that now primarily serves domestic and industrial use. This change reflects Israel's transformation from an agrarian society into a modern technological powerhouse. But how was this grand water infrastructure built? Between 1956 and 1964, Israel embarked on an unprecedented engineering journey. The construction of this system revolutionized the country's water supply, with a route beginning at the Sea of Galilee and extending to the Negev Desert. It all starts deep in the Sea of Galilee, where underground pipes draw water from 209 meters below sea level. From there, the water is directed to the Sapir pumping station, the vital center of the system. This station houses three giant 30,000 HP pumps, each capable of filling an Olympic-sized pool in under three minutes. After the Sapir station, the water begins its ascent through concrete pipes designed to withstand pressures of up to 70 atmospheres, comparable to the pressure at 700 meters deep in the ocean. These pipes transport the water over 2 kilometers to an open canal, where it begins its journey south to Israel. One of the project's most ingenious aspects is the use of siphons, which allow the water to cross deep valleys using the principle of communicating vessels, meaning that the water seeks its own level. These impressive siphons have internal diameters of up to 3.6 meters and reach depths of 150 meters, equivalent to a 50-story building. The water then passes through three main tunnels dug into the mountains. The Shimron Tunnel, 1.5 kilometers long, 
the imposing Homina Tunnel, 6.5 kilometers long, and the Minabi Tunnel, 350 meters long. Each of these tunnels was carefully designed to avoid any water loss along the way. Before reaching its final destination, the water arrives at the Eshkol Reservoir, where it undergoes a sophisticated three-stage purification process. First, a physical chemical treatment with aluminum sulfate removes impurities. Next, an innovative biological treatment system is activated, using fish as natural sanitizers. Herbivorous carp control aquatic vegetation, while other fish help control algae and microorganisms. Finally, the water is treated with chlorine dioxide, enriched with fluoride, and exposed to ultraviolet radiation. From the Eshkol Reservoir, the purified water is distributed through a vast network of pipes reaching every corner of Israel, from coastal cities to agricultural communities in the desert. To ensure everything runs smoothly, main pipes measuring 2.5 meters in diameter allow for regular inspections with special vehicles, while a computerized system monitors water quality 24 hours a day, conducting detailed chemical analyses three times a day. This extraordinary work transports water over 130 kilometers, overcoming gravity and rugged terrain to transform the desert into fertile land and provide drinking water to millions of people. With this project, Israel has fully met its demand for potable water, ensuring a prosperous future in one of the driest regions on the planet. The efficiency of Israel's water system is impressive. While Brazil loses an average of 24% of its water during transport, Israel keeps this loss below 3%, a remarkable figure on a global scale. An even more striking contrast is the South North Water Transfer Project in China, a colossal undertaking that annually diverts 44.8 billion cubic meters from the Yangtze River, with an estimated investment of $62 billion. It is the largest water transfer project in the world, and if you're interested in learning more about this Chinese construction, we have a dedicated video on it here on the channel. Although much larger in scale, the Chinese project incorporated many pioneering technical innovations developed in Israel, especially in water treatment and quality monitoring systems, highlighting the lasting impact of Israeli technology. Israel's water transportation project revolutionized the country in multiple ways. In the agricultural sector, it enabled the development of drip irrigation, making Israel a global leader in precision agriculture. Today, Israel produces 95% of its own food and exports more than $2.5 billion in agricultural products each year. At the population level, the project enabled the establishment of over 50 new settlements in the Negev Desert, transforming what was once considered an inhospitable environment into a hub of agricultural and technological innovation. Beersheba, for instance, has grown from a small town of 20,000 inhabitants in the 1950s to over 200,000 residents today, establishing itself as a research center in water technologies. The environmental benefits of the project have also been notable. It enabled the recovery of aquifers contaminated by saltwater and encouraged reforestation in desert areas. Israel is one of the few countries in the world to end the 20th century with more green areas than it had at the beginning. In technological terms, the challenges posed by this infrastructure spurred the development of advanced technologies in desalination, water purification, and monitoring, creating an industry that exports over $2 billion in water technologies annually. This project, therefore, represents how a determined nation can overcome extreme challenges and transform its limitations into opportunities for innovation. Today, as the world faces increasing challenges with water scarcity, Israel's national water carrier stands out as an inspiring example of how engineering and planning can create sustainable solutions for large-scale problems. It proves that with advanced technology and strategic planning, even deserts can be transformed into fertile lands. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. And to those who have become members of Construction Time, remember that, along with exclusive perks like ad-free videos, early access content, and exclusive materials, you have a chance to win a personalized mug from our channel. All of this starts at an affordable price. Just click the button below or use the QR code on the screen with your phone's camera. We'll wrap things up here. A big hug, and see you in the next video.